speak. Chapter 27, First Amendment. Mr. Nack storms into class, a ball chasing 33 red flags. We slide into our seats. I think for sure he's going to explode, which he does, but in an unpredictable, faintly educational way. Immigration, he writes on the board. I'm pretty sure he spelled it right. Mr. Deck, my family has been in this country for over 200 years. We built this place, fought in every war, from the first one to the last one, paid taxes and voted. A cartoon thought bubble forms over the heads of everyone in class. Will this be on the test? Mr. Neck. So then tell me why my son can't get a job. A few hands creep skyward. Mr. Neck ignores them. It's a pretend question. When he asks so he can give the answer, I relax. This is like when my father complains about his boss. The best thing to do is to stay away and blink sympath sympathetically. His son wanted to be a firefighter, but he didn't get the job. Mr. Neck is convinced that this is some kind of reverse discrimination. He says we should close our borders so that real Americans can get the jobs they deserve. The job test said that I would be a great, good firefighter. I wonder if I could take a job away from Mr. Neck's son. I tune out and focus on my doodle, a pine tree. I've been trying to carve a linoleum block in art. The problem with the block is that there is no way to correct mistakes. Every mistake I make is frozen in the picture, so I have to think ahead. Mr. Neck writes on the board again. Debate. America should have closed her borders in 1900. That strikes a nerve. Several nerves. I can see kids counting backwards on their fingers, trying to figure out when their grandparents or great-grandparents were born, when they came to America, if they would have made the neck cut. When they figure out they would have been stuck in a country that hated them or a place with no schools or a place with no future, their hands shoot up. They beg to differ with Mr. Neck's learned opinion. I don't know where my family came from. Someplace cold where they eat beans on Thursdays and hang their wash on the line on Mondays. I don't know how long we've been in America. We've been in this school district since I was in first grade. That must count for something. I started an apple tree. The arguments jump back and forth across the room. A few stuck-ups quickly figure out which side Mr. Neck is squatting on, so they fight to throw out the foreigners. Anyone whose family immigrated in the last century has a story to tell about how hard their relatives have worked, the contributions they've made to the country, the taxes they've paid. A member of the archery club tries to say that we are all foreigners and we should give the country back to the Native Americans, but she's buried under disagreement. Mr. Neck enjoys the noise until one kid challenges him directly. Brave kid. Maybe your son didn't get the job because he's not good enough or he's lazy or the other guy was better than him no matter what his skin color. I think the white people who have been here for 200 years are the ones pulling down the country. They don't know how to work. They've had it too easy. The pro-immigration forces erupt in applause and hooting. Mr. Neck. You watch your mouth, mister. You are talking about my son. I don't want to hear any more from you. That is enough debate. Get your books out. The Neck is back in control. Showtime is over. I try to draw a branch coming out of the tree trunk for the 315th time. It looks so flat, a cheap, cruddy drawing. I have no idea how to make it come alive. So focused. I don't notice that at first that David Picatrice, my lab partner, stood up. The class stops talking. I put my pencil down. Mr. Neck. Mr. Patakis, take your seat. David Patakis is never, ever in trouble. He is the kid who wins perfect attendance records, who helps the staff chase down bugs in the computer files of report cards. I chew a hangnail on my pinky. What is he thinking? Is he flipped, finally cracked under the pressure of being smarter than everyone? David. If the class is debating, then each student has the right to say what is on his mind. Mr. Neck. I decide who talks here. David. You open the debate. You can't close it just because it's not going your way. Mr. Neck, watch me. Take your seat, Mr. Petrakis. David, the Constitution does not recognize different classes of citizenship based on time spent living in the country. I am a citizen with the same rights as your son or you. 
As a citizen and as a student, I'm protesting the tone of this lesson as racist, intolerant, and xenophobic. Mr. Neck, sit your butt in the chair, Patrakis, and watch your mouth. I try to get a debate going in here, and you people turn it into a race thing. Sit down or you're going to the principal. David stares at Mr. Neck, looks at the flag for a minute, then picks up his books and walks out of the room. He says a million things without saying a word. Make a note to study David Petrakis. I have never heard a more eloquent silence.